Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Wilson, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. AM 630. 8.07 on a Wednesday morning in Washington, D.C. This is the morning majority. Tom Brokaw joins us about a half hour from now. Do you want to say tomorrow on the show we got... Senator Mike Lee from Utah. Stuart awesome. Varney will be here. We'll right. get into you know the latest on Greece on that. Tony Blankley coming up tomorrow as well. Right now, Katrina Vanden Heuvel joins us. Editor of The Nation. Got a new book out called The Change I Believe In, Fighting for Progress in the Age of Obama. Good morning, Katrina. Good morning. Good morning. So I assume you were very happy on one particular November night in 2008 when uh, Barack Obama won in a rather... I wouldn't call it a landslide, but it was a pretty wide convincing. margin. A convincing, thank you. Thank you, Mary Catherine. A convincing margin, for sure. Are you as happy today as you were in November of 08? Uh, was was happy that night in November, but I also understood that the work began the day after, because I don't believe that one man, one woman, any president in one election cycle can change the kind of paradigm of our politics, our system, which I believe in so many ways is corrupted by corporate money by establishment and trench power and so i saw it as the beginning as the beginning and i believe that you know real change talking about the change i believe in has come about in our history from movements from organizing people from below in alliance in coalition with politicians and leaders of conviction inside the system you, you, you say that you you have an issue or you have a concern about powers of establishment and powers of money i mean there's there's there are people who look at that very differently and, and i would ask you this question i would phrase it this way why do you have a problem with people who work and accomplish and succeed and pay taxes and that, those taxes go to pay for government services that are given to the fifty percent of americans who don't contribute to the cost of government this is one of the two Brian's, right? This is Brian, this is Brian Wilson. I'm Brian happy Wilson. to stand by that question. No, I like that. Um, sorry if I think of a beach boy. But um, I don't have a problem. What I do have a problem with, Brian, is the fact that in this country today, we have obscene inequality colliding with downward social mobility and a tax system that I believe is deeply unfair and regressive and that the very richest in this country have not paid their fair share. And I think this country is made great by a strong middle class, which has been gutted and weakened in these last 30 years. The wages of average working people have stagnated, while the income of the very rich have soared, and the inequality has accelerated in ways that I believe don't make this country a more secure, more hopeful, greater America. So I think we need strong government, one that isn't captured or corrupted by special interests. We need a strong labor movement. We need a strong middle class. Well, do you, we do you support the people that occupy Wall Street? Are they, are they doing the thing that you think is right? Let me put it this way. There is no one Occupy Wall Street. I was in, Occupy, I was in Bloomington, Indiana with my husband a few weeks ago. There's an Occupy Bloomington. There are 2,000 or more encampments around this country. What those people are representing is a view enough, enough. Make those who created this mess, clean it up, pay for it. And how do you do that? Well, I we have been paying for it. No, well, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm paying my taxes. I mean, I'm paying my fair share, I feel like. banks have it, and I'm pleased to say that I think one of the small victories of Occupy Wall Street, which, by the way, is, you know, these are citizens, different kinds of citizens, people across this country, and there's thousands of groups across this country who've been working hard over these last years to help people fight evictions from foreclosed homes, to fight for more fairness in our system. And it's those groups which are finally also getting some supercharging. And I like that the mainstream media is finally understanding there's more than one movement. I mean, the Tea Party, there's one, more than one movement in this country. Today, Bank of America announced that it's scrapping its debit card fee. fee. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, you know, that's a good thing. Why should a bank, which has benefited so extensively, even after being part of a you know, financial crisis, which deregulation allowed these banks to cause a lot of the problems we're living with, why should it charge average people right, but, $5 for use of uh, a debit I, card? 
Sorry. But that's not because of Occupy Wall Street because there are protesters out there. It's because a lot of people took their money out of Bank of America and went to another place, but another that's bank. But the Occupy Wall Street. But also, right, but that's part of, of the market. What saying, move, no, that's just people being cheap money. and reasonable. Oh, no, it's being, move it's, your money. Yeah, that's capitalism. <laughs> banks, but you know what? Here's one thing that's always misunderstood. There are different kinds of capitalism. There's crony capitalism, and there is a capitalism which one might call plain vanilla boring capitalism, which is about investing in the real economy and not just derivatives or speculation. When you see a sign today, many of these leaders around the world, including, including President Obama, are heading to the meeting of the G20. It mm -hmm. all sounds very grand. There's a sign on the front page of the New York Times of someone in a crowd, I think, some, where they're meeting in Europe, holding up a poster saying, people before profits. I think that's a well, human. Do you think you should humane. pay more money uh, to, the, to the government? I do. You, you, I do. And you're prepared to write a check today because you know you can do no, that. No, I think I should pay more taxes. And I think I stand with people like... Well, I mean, are, are you prepared to actually you know, put your money where your mouth is and write a check to the Treasury because you have that right yeah, at this very that. moment? Well, I mean, if someone comes to my door right now and knocks on it, I would, would like to get a... a a, I would like to get to see a tax code that is more progressive, that does ask more of the richest. Because but I you're not willing think. to do that on your own, because you know, you can well, if you feel that where, strongly. Where would it go? Well, I'd be happy. Yeah, that's what I ask about all my tax money. Where would it yeah. go? No, but it, well, I think. Listen, uh, first of all, my basic sense of what's going on in this country is that America is not broke. I think our priorities are broke, and I think you know the vast majorities of vast majority of people have said put job creation before. Debt reduction, deficit reduction. I think there's been a lot of manufacturing of this kind of debt hysteria, deficit hysteria in this country. Um, my a Nation reporter Ari Berman wrote a cover story last week called "The Austerity Class." Why is austerity the prevailing mantra of our times? It shouldn't be. It should be investing so that we are a stronger country and uh, realigning our priorities. If you invest a little too much, you end up like Greece, and so that's the concern. Yeah. Yeah, when you look you know at Greece, Greece is not a good person. Here's a, here's but a, but, let, me, but let, me, let me ask this. As a, sure. as a progressive, yes. uh, you believe in a stronger federal government uh, to make things better for everyone. Um, you, but you end up with Obama, who has disappointed many liberals and progressives in many ways, partly by getting a lot of Wall Street money, being in many ways an entrenched interest, having backroom deals with pharma, for instance, during the Obamacare debate. As a progressive, when you give more, mo more money and more power to the federal government, how do you escape the reality that the person in charge of that government and the people elected in, which is inevitably, inevitably going to change for Republicans at some point, that sort of dashes your, uh, your plan, doesn't it? You know, Mary, you're right. First of all, I'm a small D Democrat, right. et cetera. I mean, I believe that government, mu we need a, an effective government. We need other countervailing forces in this country, too, because, as I said earlier, our government has been captured in many ways. We need, people need to reclaim the government. Do you know so many people believe, and I think rightly so at this moment, that government is rigged against them because it has been captured. Why, do we, why did we get a health care bill that was so diluted and didn't have a public option? didn't even start with Medicare for All. Some of that was President Obama's leadership. He should have laid it out clearly at the outset what he stood for and stood by it. Some of it is a Republican Congress, which has announced at the outset it's more interested in bringing him down rather than governing. Some of it is an arcane process called the filibuster, which needs to be updated, if not abolished. And much of it is the fact that I haven't done the count recently, but you've got like 10 big pharma lobbyists for every member of the Congress. So you've got a system that needs reclaiming. And well, I think my part argument of what's would going be, on in this country is people seeing that and say, enough, we've got to find right. a way to have... I actually agree with you on this, but yeah. my argument would be the bigger the system gets and the more cumbersome, the less influence someone, a normal person has. I don't think it's about size. I think also at the state level we're seeing people more active now because they see the powers within the states. I think one of the most important votes coming up next week will be the vote in Ohio, uh, you know, 1.3 million people quickly signed this referendum to overturn SB5, which Governor Kasich put through to, I believe, got the rights of collective bargaining, workers, uh, labor, which brought middle right. class the eight-hour working day. So people should support overturning uh, that legislation. Right, Katrina, we're out of time. Just one question. You, you said uh, rich need to pay their fair share. What is, what's the definition of fair share for you? Well, the you know, listen, President Eisenhower, no radical he, as I recall, had I you know, 90 percent, it was a 70 percent marginal tax rate. Yeah. Would I go there at this point? No, but I would certainly make private equity hedge funders pay the, the real tax rate, not 15 percent on carried interest, and I'd make the very richest 
pay what it was at least under the Clinton era and let those Bush tax cuts expire yeah. as soon as they can. I think we need a really we need a progressive tax system right. in this country. Katrina Vanden Heuvel, thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate it.